A very good morning to you commuters and welcome to another episode of MC Commute. Today's show is a little bit more exciting than usual. Can you guess why? Yeah, that's right. There are 177 reasons why this commute will probably be a little bit more fun than the usual ride to work. That's a 2017 BMW S1000 RR and it is fully loaded. We're going to talk about what that means, uh, what the bikes like to ride, and uh, you know, the usual mumbo jumbo as we ride to work. I'm excited. Here we go team. Recognize that crazy crooked S1000 face anywhere, right? Uh, big honk and Brembo's that we'll talk about. Forged wheels, I believe that's a part of the premium package that we'll also talk a little bit more about. Forged wheels that are a little dirty. Sorry about that. I've been riding this bike around. I will not apologize for that. Uh, the asymmetrical uh, bodywork ride is a little different on the other side of a BMW thing. And that weird looking face. Okay, let's do it, shall we? So the basics for the S1000 RR. Uh, you got a 999cc inline four. Um, the engine architecture is not particularly special, but a little bit of BMW special sauce, I guess, in the tuning and engineering. And it is, um, for some time now, widely agreed upon as the most powerful of the 1000cc uh, superbikes which is nothing to sneeze at because it is a category where there is an awful lot of horsepower on tap. This guy's gonna let me go. He's so nice, got an electric car. Thank you so much, fella. <clears throat> One area where S1000 has never been particularly good uh, is weight. This one weighed in at 467 pounds uh, on our scales with a full tank of gas. So um, that's not crazy heavy, but it's also uh, not real light when you compare it to uh, a Panigale or uh, even an R1, which is 440 something, I think. Uh, anyway, that's the sort of uh, basic basics. What else we got? Uh, 4.6 gallons of fuel, I think. Um, a 32 inch seat height, approximately 32.1, I think. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty basic measurements, really. Um, We'll talk a little bit more about ergonomics in a minute here. Uh, this is Velcro that was uh, used to put a lap timer on for track testing. So don't worry about those little guys. And actually, I'd like to jump into ergonomics right off the bat because uh, there will probably be a few people who will comment on this video and say, oh, what are you doing commuting on a leader bike? That's kind of silly. Like sport bikes aren't commuters. Why don't you take it to the racetrack? Blah, blah, blah. But this show is about riding to work, and that's what I'm doing with this bike. And the truth is, lots of people do that on sport bikes every day. And the reason I want to talk about that with the BMW S1000RR is that it's actually pretty comfortable. <laughs> it's consistently one of the most impressively comfortable sport bikes that I ever ride. And that's saying something, because a lot of uh, sport bikes just aren't really comfortable. You know, they, they build them for the track, and that's the end of story. But the S1000 really is not bad at all. 32 inch seat height is not crazy tall. You sort of sit down in the bike a little bit. Um, the reach to the handlebars is, I don't know, I can only describe it as appropriate. It's not wildly cramped on your wrists. Um, but it, I don't know, it's just, it's a really, really nice package. And um, BMW should get a lot of credit for that. When you ride it on a racetrack, it is, uh, you know, you do wish the seat was a little bit higher. <laughs> um, and it does feel a little bit heavy. Uh, it's always a compromise in a category like this. That's the way of the gun. Um, but as a street bike, it's really, really good considering how comprehensively amazing it is as a, a sport bike in general. So I guess bottom line with all that is that I happen to love this bike, um, but I think it's worth pointing out uh, its flaws and, um, it's uh, sort of positives because I do know people, typically smaller riders in my experience, or ones that don't really like the S1000 very much. Um, I think because it's a little bit heavy uh, and I don't know, maybe the ergonomics aren't great for them. You will not see me using the clutch very much on this commute. Uh, the S1000RR has auto shift both directions. 
So it's a quick shifter up, and when you go down, check it out. Boop, boop, boop. From fourth to first, no left hand. Uh, so really just when you're at stops is the only time you need to use the clutch. And um, some people have complained that the downshift function on this bike is a little bit clunky, um, which is fair. But, I don't know, for me, it's pretty good. Uh, dash and Mahuzit, I guess we could talk about that. There's an awful lot of information. Uh, big uh, analog tack, obviously. And uh, gear position indicator, speed, and then a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo that I don't really have time to go through all of it, if I'm honest. Um, but there's lean angle, <laughs> which it keeps track of your maximum lean angle, as well as trip meters, of course, the clock, of course, coolant temperature, of course. Yeah, you can uh, cycle through all that mumbo jumbo here. You can do range to empty, which is nice. Uh, yeah, it's got a, got a lot of features. It is a little bit dated, maybe, the dash, uh, in the era of TFT, uh, when you got an R1 and the Panigale and the RSV4, and uh, I don't know, maybe other bikes that I'm forgetting, Super Duke, so on and so forth, that have um, full color screens. But I have to say, I say this every time, and I'll say it again, um, there's something about a uh, analog tack, right? There's just something about an analog tack. Watching that needle swing up, which we're going to do when we leave this stoplight. I have trash control on, I have wheelie control on, I have ABS on. Sort of unlike me, but with a bike like this, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> it's got a lot of power. The uh, premium package that I was talking about this bike comes with comes with an awful lot of uh, very BMW features too. Auto cancel signals, for example, which is, uh, I don't know, it's not super fancy or anything, <laughs> but sort of something that you don't always see on motorcycles. Um, it's got heated grips, it's got cruise control, um, which uh, other bikes, again, other bikes have, but um, it's not super common, especially in super bikes. Uh, cruise control and heat grips, not something you always see. Although the new RSV4 has cruise control, I believe. Uh, it also has uh, semi-active suspension. So the suspension adjusts while you ride. And if you don't know exactly how that system works, then uh, look it up, because it's pretty darn cool. Basically, um, like 50 or 100 times a second, something like that, I don't remember the exact figure, the suspension decides how to uh, damp the springs, which is pretty nifty. Uh, and you can adjust it all in the dash also, depending on which ride mode you're in, of which there are four or five. It's a very complicated machine. <laughs> Frankly, a 25 minute commute is not enough time to talk about it all, but it's worth looking up if you're interested in it. Traffic is pretty bad today, it seems. Uh, and as I change lanes here, I can tell you that the mirrors on this bike are not great. In the scope of sport bike mirrors, the S1000 is pretty good. It's, it's pretty darn good, but these bikes in general struggle to have mirrors that work really well. Not the end of the day, I suppose. Worth trading for 180 horsepower, maybe? Eh, I'll let you decide. And as we meander through traffic on this very, very warm day in California, this is about the time when you start to notice a uh, sport bike, especially a super bike, uh, some heat coming off of the engine. Uh, it's um, something that, you know, manufacturers struggle with, right? Because with power comes heat and you have to do something with it and the radiator goes at the front of the bike and the person sits in the middle of the bike and you're going to get some heat washing over the rider. Some bikes are famously bad. Um, uh, yeah, the Panigale is pretty bad. The previous generation R1 was really bad the, with the undertail pipe. Um, it would just like cook your backside. Uh, so yeah, a lot of bikes, uh, especially bikes that create a lot of power, have struggled with that in the past. The BMW is pretty good in general. Um, it's very pragmatic, very Teutonic, very German. Um, but I do get a little bit of heat right now, wafting up off the radiator and off the engine onto the bottom of my legs and my thighs. Um, and that's sort of the, the way it goes. It's not uncomfortable or painful, it's just noticeable. The frame spars here are exposed uh, and the frame gets really, really hot. 
uh, because it's bolted to the engine, which gets hot. Um, other super bikes, I, you know, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, but other super bikes have, um, not everyone, some of them have covers over the frame so that your, your legs don't touch the actual frame. And sometimes they look kind of chintzy, uh, if I'm honest, but also your legs don't touch the frame, which is super hot. So that's <laughs> sort of a consumer decision that you're gonna have to make. Sorry, I can't make that call for you. Um, in this case, the, the frame rail is getting hot and touching my legs is not a reason that I would not buy this bike, uh, but it is something that I suspect BMW will address in the next edition because they're just, they're just too German not to. They don't know how to not address problems. Traffic's real bad this morning, so I can't really get going at a typical freeway speed, frankly, but I'm going 60 or 65 right now. Um, and I can tell you that um, the wind protection is basically what you'd expect. Um, you don't get a whole lot of wind protection. It keeps the, for me, I'm kind of tall. It keeps the wind off of my, I don't know, my stomach, <laughs> but my shoulders and my head are definitely out in the wind. With a sport bike though, that can be good actually because you end up with uh, wind pushing on your upper body and you have a little bit less weight on your wrists. Um, so sometimes that's actually kind of a good thing. In general, the S1000 is not, um, like I said before, it's not wildly comfortable. It's not a, a touring bike, but uh, in the category of sport bikes, it's pretty comfortable. The seat's pretty cushy. There's okay leg room and yeah, the wind protection is not bad. The fairing is wider at the front than a lot of other bikes. Once again, traffic is gonna harsh our groove here, but we can peel into this corner with a little bit of speed. This is exactly where you'd expect this bike to be real good, and it is. Um, at 40 miles an hour on an off-ramp, it's frankly not any much better or worse than uh, any other sport bike, but handles real nice, very neutral. <laughs> oh my god, it's so fast. <sighs> you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't ever do that. Don't ever do that. You will never want for power on an S1000RR. I mean, you can always use a little bit more power, right? Between you and me, more power is always good. But this bike is, it's amazing. <laughs> I kind of, uh, kind of can't believe they sell them to people, frankly. Now you guys are probably wondering if you can back it in now that we're here. You'll notice I uh, held down the mode button here a couple times and uh, shut off the rider aids. And when you shut off ABS, then you can do this. <laughs> uh, yes, you can back it in because you can shut off ABS. Thank you, BMW, I do appreciate that. But you'll notice that for my whole commute, I had it on because I think ABS is a good safety feature. I am pro ABS, um, but I do like it best when you can turn it off because yeah, it's fun to do that stuff. So pricing, you can have uh, buying and selling S1000s, basically starts at 16. Um, but if you want the premium package with all the mumbo jumbo, you're going to pay almost 20. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this bike as tested is 19 and change, I think. 19.4 or something like that, 19.5. Um, that's nothing to sneeze at. It's like, it's a fair amount of money for a motorcycle. If we're honest, right? But you do get a pretty nice machine for that money. There it is, kids. S1000RR. It sound high performance? That's because it is. It's a mighty fine motorcycle, and it ought to be for 20 grand, right? Yeah, that one gets two thumbs up from me. Love this motorcycle. Frickin' love it. I hope you guys uh, had a good time on this commute. I hope I talked about all the things that you care about. And if not, leave a comment below, and subscribe, and uh, we'll do more commutes like this in the future. Thanks again, guys. See ya. Oh, hey -o.
One more thing, MC commuters, before I let you go, we really wanna make these shows better. And to do that, we need to know what you think. That's you, the viewer. So, to try and convince you to take our survey, we're gonna give you this, a sweet Velimaki backpack for your MC commute, your very own. And inside this waterproof bad boy, a toolkit from Cruise Tools. All this stuff is yours if you just fill out the survey. The link is in the description of this video. So check it out, tell us what you think, and you could win some cool kit. All right, that's it for me. Seriously, see you next time.